musicians, pop stars, country western legends. They've been sought after. They've been followed even after their death. We love to go exercise walking if we can't go hiking. And one of the best places to go are cemeteries. And when you go to a cemetery, there is always a history lesson. And that is where we're going to take you today, where we have found the graves of some famous musicians. Visitors may not enter Neverland Ranch, but this does not discourage fans from decorating anything and everything that they can at the entrance to Michael Jackson's one-time famous amusement park ranch. The entrance is a makeshift memorial on Figueroa Mountain Road in the mountainside outside of Los Olivos, California. His family had planned to bury him there. We found his grave at the Evergreen Cemetery in Highland Park, north of Detroit, Michigan. That took us from California to Michigan, and now we'll drop down to Jacksonville, Florida. This musician's name is Ronnie Van Zant, and he was the lead singer and founding member of the 1970s Southern rock band, Leonard Skinner. Do you know how they got their name, Leonard Skinner? It was from their coach. His name is Leonard Skinner, and we found his grave in the same cemetery. The coach, he didn't like long-haired guys, and He was always sending them to the principal's office. They did change the spelling of the name to not be the same as Leonard Skinner. Ronnie Van Zant and Leonard Skinner are famous for some of the most famous songs like Sweet Home Alabama. Their other and most special song would be Free Bird. And this has been epitomized on some of their graves. On October 20th, 1977, with band member Steve Gaines, Cassie Gaines, and assistant road manager Dean Kilpatrick, Ronnie Van Zant was killed when the band's chartered flight to Baton Rouge crashed due to fuel exhaustion. Does that mean they ran out of fuel? That is horrible. Near Gillsburg, Mississippi. Due to the June 29, 2000 vandalizing of his original grave site, his casket was moved to this new cemetery. In early 2022, he was finally laid to rest in a different family plot at Riverside Memorial Park Cemetery under a big oak tree overlooking a small lake and we were able to find that grave and the previous place. Oak tree you're in my way and some of you may know what I'm talking about. Now let's jump down to Texas to another famous guitarist who may be lesser known to many of you but I liked his music back in the day. His name is Stevie Ray Vaughan and he is buried in the Vaughan Estate in Dallas, Texas. He was born in Dallas, Texas in October of 1954. He was a rock and blues musician. His elder brother Jimmy, guitarist in the group The Fabulous Thunderbirds, which many of you have probably heard of The Fabulous Thunderbirds, introduced Stevie Ray Vaughan to the world of rock and roll blues. He became a fan of B.B. King, Albert King, and Jimi Hendrix. And we'll be taking you to Jimi Hendrix's grave, so you'll want to hold on so you can see that. You might remember him from the band called double trouble. This is going to be a recurring theme as we just heard with Ronnie Van Zant. Death not only because of drugs and alcohol, but because of accidents or a combination thereof. Sometimes the lifestyle took him down and sometimes it was a tragic accident. In August of 1990, Stevie Ray Vaughan was killed in a private helicopter crash in a thick fog in Wisconsin after leaving a concert at which he'd appeared with musicians Buddy Guy, Eric Clapton, Robert Cray, and Jimmy Vaughn. Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2015. And since we just mentioned Wisconsin, we'll stick with Wisconsin and we'll go to Waukesha, where we found the grave of Lester William Pulsfus. Most of you know him by the name Les Paul. Les Paul did not have a tragic ending. He lived to the age of 94. He died in White Plains, New York. He is buried at the Prairie Home Cemetery in Waukesha. He was a musician and inventor. He is known as the Wizard of Waukesha and the father of a solid body electric guitar. His career spanned from country music to popular music to jazz. He is the only person in both the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Les Paul forever changed the recording industry with his innovations of multi-track recording, overdubbing, electronic reverb, guitar effects, phase shifting, and more. Having his name on one of the world's best-known electric guitars, the Gibson Les Paul, recognizes his innovations in developing the solid-body electric guitar. His accomplishments and some quotes are found at his gravesite. Every setback might be the very thing that makes you carry on and fight all the harder and become much better. Les Paul, those are really good words. I mentioned Jimi Hendrix. Okay, this is going to be another tragedy. James Marshall Hendricks was born in November of 1942 in Seattle, and he is buried in Renton, Washington. 
not far. He is one of modern rock music's most influential figures on the electric guitar. Thanks to Les Paul, right? His styles ranged from rhythm and blues to jazz to funk. He was born Johnny Allen Hendricks in Seattle, and his father changed his name to James Marshall Hendricks. Left-handed, he self-taught himself how to play a right-handed guitar when he was a young boy specializing in southern blues styles. His first single was released in 1966, and it was Hey Joe. It was followed up by his famous Purple Haze, and The Wind Cries Mary. One of his most memorable appearances is performing at the Woodstock Festival in New York, where Hendrix played his famed version of The Star-Spangled Banner. On the morning of September 18, 1970, his girlfriend, Monica, couldn't wake him, in, and she called an ambulance, but he was pronounced dead. A coroner's inquest recorded the cause of death was suffocation due to, this is gross, but very sad, inhalation of vomit. The day we were there, there were several gentlemen strumming guitars under the marble dome. And since we're in Washington and we're talking about tragedies, we did find a memorial for Kurt Cobain. Born Kurt Donald Cobain in February of 1967 in Aberdeen, he was cremated, but this small memorial is found in his hometown. He died at the age of 27 at his own hands. He was the singer and guitarist for the seminal grunge band Nirvana. In 1991, Nirvana had become a popular group in Great Britain, and this led to them becoming mainstream in America. In 1992, he married Courtney Love, who was pregnant with his daughter, Frances. Cobain once was quoted saying, wanting to be someone else is a way of the person you are. I'd rather be hated for who I am than loved for whom I am not. You can find this grunge memorial to him at the end of a street and the neighbors aren't real fond of it because they've put up the sign, no, this isn't a gift shop. No, Kurt didn't live here. Let's go back to Texas and Gentleman Jim Reeves. He was a country music singer and he was born in August of 1923 and he died at the age of 40 in 1964. He received international acclaim for his rich baritone voice that produced award-winning country songs. Some of his classic songs are Home, Am I Losing You, Blue Boy, and his platinum hit, He'll Have to Go, hitting number one on both country and pop charts. The hit records continued to be released posthumously with songs such as Is It Really Over, Blue Side of Lonesome and Missing You. In the 1980s, electrical created duets with Patsy Cline and Deborah Allen were successful. Isn't that nuts? According to Billboard magazine, he had 51 top 10 hits with 19 after his death. He is buried in a park on the east side of Carthage, Texas near the Panola Airport. He died in a plane crash in 1964. And the sidewalk to his grave has this guitar inlaid in it, and it's really, really cool, don't you think? And it has this record inside, like where the hole of the guitar is. It says, Gentleman Jim, time, August 20, 1923, July 31st, 1964. Producer, God, Jim Reeves. I thought that was really touching. Well, we're still in Texas, and let's head to the valley and to San Benito, a town found between Brownsville and Harlingen. Born Baltimore Garza Huerta. We all know him as Freddy Fender. He died at the age of 69 in Corpus Christi, Texas, and he is buried at the San Benito Memorial Park Cemetery. He is best known for the song Before the Next Teardrop Falls, a number one hit on both Billboard magazine's country and hot 100 charts in 1975. Can you believe that's almost 50 years ago? This song sold 1 million copies and was awarded the Country Music Association Single of the Year in 1975. Texas Governor George Bush wrote the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce endorsing Fender, of which he was awarded a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. His grave markers are beautiful. And now that we're on the country western genre, let's talk about Hank Williams Sr. and another tragedy. Hiram King Williams was born in Mount Olive, Alabama, September 1923. He died at the young age, here we go, of 29 on January 1, 1953 in Oak Hill, West Virginia. He is buried in Montgomery at the Oakwood Annex Cemetery next to his wife. He received international acclaim for his traditional style country music sung with his bluesy honky-tonk voice. Having a dozen singles to reach number one on the top 10, the list of his hits is long, given that he lived only 29 years. Move it on over. Lovesick Blues. I'm so lonesome I could cry. I'm sure many of you have heard tons of Hank Williams honky-tonk songs. Etched in stone are the names of many of his singles. His son, Hank Williams Jr., asked, 
to please do not desecrate this sacred spot. Many thanks. And that is one thing that is really common is that these people's graves are ransacked. It's just crazy. I don't understand it. We went to go see Whitney Houston's grave. The family has hired a private guard to stand so that no one can even get near her gravesite. We respected that, of course. Williams was an American singer, songwriter, and musician and regarded as one of the most significant country music artists of all time. He was born with a mild under diagnosed case of spina bifida occulta, a disorder of the spinal column which gave him lifelong pain, a factor in his later abuse of alcohol and other drugs. In 1951, he fell during a hunting trip in Tennessee. This reactivated his old back pain. He started to consume painkillers, including morphine and alcohol, to ease the pain. In June, he divorced Audrey Williams, and on August 11th, Williams was dismissed from the Grand Old Opry for habitual drunkenness. His performances were acclaimed when he was sober, but despite the efforts of his work associates to get him to show sober, his abuse of alcohol resulted in occasions when he did not appear on his performances or his performances were poor. His biographer concluded that the cause of his death was heart failure caused by the combination of alcohol, morphine, and chlora hydrate. The president of MGM told Billboard magazine that the company got only about five requests for pictures of Williams during the weeks prior to his death, but over 300 afterwards. The local record shop sold out of all their records, and customers were asking for all records ever released by Williams. His final single release during his lifetime was ironically titled, I'll Never Get Out of This World Alive. Wow. Your Cheatin' Heart was written and recorded in 1952, but released in 1953, after Williams' death. The song was number one on the country charts for six weeks. Their legacy lives on, but not them. Now let's go out to Mesa, Arizona, and to the grave of Waylon Jennings. He's a Texas boy born in Littlefield, Texas. He was born in June of 1937. He was a country western singer and famed for such hits as I'm a Ramblin' Man and Good Hearted Woman. He recorded over 60 albums and had 16 number one country singles. He started his music career at age 12. By 1959, he was playing bass in the backup band for singer Buddy Holly. Now this is crazy. In early February 1959, he gave up his seat to singer J.P., the big bopper, Richardson, on the plane that carried Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and Richardson to their deaths, taking a bus instead. I'll be mentioning Buddy Holly in a minute. He teamed up with famous Willie Nelson, singing songs like Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys, Luke and Bach, and, of course, Good Hearted Woman. Waylon Jennings was famous for being married to Jesse Coulter, although he had had three wives prior to that. He died in February 2002 at age 64 from complications from diabetes. Someone had left a package for Jesse at his tombstone. His inscription on his tombstone reads, I am my beloved's, my beloved is mine. A loving son, husband, father, and grandfather. A vagabond dreamer, a rhymer, and a singer of songs, a revolutionary in country music, beloved by the world. I'm going to be wrapping this up. We did see the grave of Buddy Holly in Lubbock. In Los Angeles, we saw the graves of Peggy Lee, Dean Martin, Andy Gibb. All of these people are a part of American history. We certainly don't condone their lifestyles or necessarily their music, but they are a part of our American culture. And we thought you would enjoy this trip across the country to these famous people's graves. Because it's all a part of American history, and we need to learn it and love it and appreciate it. Be sure to watch the shorts and other videos. Leave a comment. Unclassic road trip. Flip-flops on the ground.